My name's uh, Shane Stein, additional and general fight choreography and stunts for Soul Search. <laughs> well, I've been doing stunts now overall for about 10 years and work with a lot of great actors and directors so far from Gordon Alexander to Sylvia Samak to uh, loads and loads of guys. <laughs> A lot of risk assessment involved, especially if it's a fighting project. Guys can, you know, twist ankles, they can, you know, twist knees even, you know, can break things. It's so easily done, cracking your head open, losing concentration. Probably my first um, initial uh, reaction to soul searching, my first night that I worked on it, was uh, it was bloody cold, very, very cold. Um, I guess you probably <laughs> really started getting the essence of the film just, just from being on set at, at that time of the night. Because of being so cold, I mean, if you're going to go kicking 10 or 20 times, you know, the, the chances of pulling a muscle was pretty high. Shooting a, a film in the middle of winter, I, I'd probably say it it's doubles the danger. Locations weren't the most hygienic, but even though they looked fantastic on film, there was still that risk of, you know, if you'd fallen and cut yourself, the, the chance of infection was pretty high. So, you know, all those kind of things jumped to mind. <laughs> When I saw the script, my main concern was that a lot of it was weapons based. Weapons are very difficult to choreograph at the best of times. They're dangerous, even when they're blunt. Obviously, you know, one small mistake, a lead actor could be injured and the production put into jeopardy as a result. We had a lot of problems with the weapons. A lot of them had a tendency to fall apart. The swords in particular were dodgy. I think is probably the best description. I think the first thing a director needs to do is understand action. The action takes a lot longer than acting, for one. He's got to put allocated time to it. He can't just expect to do a fight in three hours or, you know, it, it depends also how involved the choreography is. What you find in some, some productions, especially uh, the independent productions, which you know, I've been happy enough to work with and you know, proud enough to work on, is uh, time is, is quite a, a big issue. And uh, these guys, you know, especially getting people together, they, they seem to want to rush things. So I think what people need to do is get back to basics, stick to the basics, stick to they know what works, because obviously the more time you put into something, the more you're going to get out of it. The scheduling and the organisation of the film in terms of the, the fight and action sequences was patchy at times. As the production went on, because of all manner of other problems that were happening and sometimes shoots were cancelled, this led to compromises being made with regards to time, which was frustrating at uh, many points. <laughs> First things first, you've got to be pretty uh, fit. Uh, a lot of um, cardiovascular work because what you find with fights, it takes a lot longer to shoot a fight than would if you were an actor. So you'd find that the director might want you to do a punch or a kick 10 times in a row with different angles. So it is quite strenuous on the body. Plus, you know, you've got to be quite supple because if your legs are stiff, you know, you're going to find all the fifth or sixth kick. You're going to pull something unless you're used to doing it. Second thing I guess I say is um, your reactions have to be spot on. Uh, you've got to be used to reactions. You'll find usually if you've done a good day's work, your neck is sore. Oh, it's so much better. <laughs> if he's got actors and actresses that have never done any action or any fighting in their lives before, um, they need time to train. And I mean, films like The Matrix or Ong Back or films like that, these guys, have, I mean, they've taken two, three years to shoot a film because of how intense the training has been. From the beginning of my involvement with um, Soul Searcher, I was keen that uh, the actors could uh, perform a lot of their own martial arts um, fight sequences. This is for a few reasons, chiefly that amongst time and limitation of camera angles. If an actor can't perform their own sequences, you're limited to the camera angles, you have to go into doubling, and you have to have many more setups because you're having to cover up for the fact that actors can't perform their own martial arts. Luckily, the lead, Ray, had done karate for a number of years. 
and he was able to pick up movements very well. Ray performed most, well, all of his own martial arts in the film. Keep the thumbs in, I learnt the hard way. I was sparring with my sensei once and I, I loosened up a bit and he punched me right on the end of the thumb. <laughs> <laughs> More practice. Johnny Lewis isn't a fighter or a screen fighter of any way or form. Yeah, good. I chose to uh, double him. It would have taken a long time, I think, to be able to shoot um, in those those conditions with somebody who couldn't couldn't fight. Now I shall thrash you to within an inch of your life. AJ, he's done stage fighting, but he's not a martial artist. But again, AJ could pick up movements fairly well too. And since his character's main weapon was a sword, AJ was very experienced at using swords. <laughs> it's got to have a rhythm. Um, it's not got to be robotic movements. There's nothing more boring than a fight where it looks like they, they don't even know what they're doing. Plus, it's got to get shot properly. I mean, it's one thing having two great fighters, but if the guy is filming and hasn't got a clue where to put the camera, it's a wasted fight. So we need to close up some of the from to bridge this one from the last one. I was going for a more 80s Hong Kong style. The Hong Kong style is very, very complicated. Unlike the old American style or the Western style that you might have seen, that includes maybe one punch, one big kick, the Hong Kong style requires many intricate movements within, say, one camera shot. And the editing style is also completely different. As you can see, the American style choreography is far less complicated than the Hong Kong one. In Hong Kong, they lack the special effects of the American uh, filmmakers, and therefore they had to become their own special effect. That's how the Hong Kong style developed. The performers had to show real physical feats to make up for the fact that they had no computer graphics or big budgets to play with. One thing people don't realise is you cannot shoot a fight all in one go. It gets broken down bit for bit for bit and you get each section perfect from reactions to hits, timing. Timing is very important. Um, I think I think if a punch is missed and people see it a mile away and if the camera angle is wrong again you know you, you'll see it. A Hong Kong film they will shoot a fight sequence in the chronological order of what happens within the final edit of the film. The shot is him lifting you up into the frame. Action! This means that every movement is created for a particular camera angle. Therefore, every movement can look its best. Action! 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 What they had done, you know, themselves, was a fantastic job on the budget that they had. So you, you still have to keep in mind the kind of production you're working on. And it's not some big, you know, multi-million dollar or pound film where everything's nice and clean and made up and built. So, you know, that's the independent side of filmmaking. It's just, you just take what you get and make the best out of it.